Yes, indeed, it happened. I did get the new Mac Studio pretty much as soon as it came out. And so the goal of today's video is to determine whether that machine is actually any good as the primary driver for video editors. Before the Mac Studio, I actually already owned an M1 MacBook Pro, the base model, and I was pretty happy with it. But there were a couple of things that drove me crazy and led me to purchase the new Mac Studio. First, it was the fact that it was a laptop and I wanted a more powerful machine, obviously so. Second was because, again, it was a laptop and so I was taking it with me on the road all the time and plugging and plugging constantly and it just drove me absolutely crazy because I like for things to be more or less stationary. And I also wanted a little bit of a cleaner setup without all the dongles and extra cables and everything all over the desk. And so, as a result, Mac Studio provided me with that. First of all, there's always a ton of hype associated with the release of a new Apple product. They have the whole event, a bunch of people are gonna make videos about it, etc, etc. But because I am not beholden to anybody and I fund all of my ventures myself, I prefer to take extra time and wait for the hype to die down and thoroughly test the machine and make up my own mind about it. So, with that in mind, I've conducted my own benchmarks not by using Puget Bench or Geekbench, even though I will post some numbers from those for you. But mostly it's going to be render numbers and export numbers from the actual projects I have worked on in the past. So here's a few notes on those benchmark numbers. First of all, all of this stuff is relative, except for obviously like Geekbench or Cinebench between two identical Macs. And the reason that all this stuff is relative is because no matter which project you're going to be working on, it's going to involve different codecs, different cameras, different kinds of footage. It's going to involve different um, drives if, let's say, you were editing on a hard drive attached to the machine or an SSD or an NVMe SSD. And if all of that is just word salad for you, I promise you I will make a video about hard drives at some point in the future. Let me know if you want, to, if you want me to make it down below. Second, all of the numbers will be a comparison between the Mac Studio base model, which is what that guy over there is, which is an M1, M1 Max chip, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, 512 SSD, and the new PC that I've built, which is an i9-12900K, 64 gigs of DDR5, 2 terabyte SSD, RTX 2070, and yes, before you start yelling at the screen at me, I understand that it's a comparison between apples and oranges, but the reason I've done it that way is because a lot of people are doing it that way and a lot of people are going to be comparing Macs to PCs as they have been for the last 20-30 years or however long it's been. So therefore, I'm giving you a little bit of a baseline there. Third, all of my benchmark numbers are going to be from Adobe Premiere Pro and a little bit of After Effects, so Adobe Creative Suite. I'm not going to be doing Final Cut or Resolve. I'm also not going to be including any of the 3D rendering softwares such as CAD or Maya or Blender, etc. because I have no experience doing that stuff and therefore I cannot give you an accurate representation of how that machine performs in those tasks. Uh, number four is all of the footage is going to be rendered and all of the benchmarks are going to be performed on an SSD RAID. It's a four terabyte OWC SSD box containing two two terabyte SSDs and basically they are connected to the Mac Studio and the new PC via a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. And again, the goal of this video is to provide you with realistic editing scenarios, not just exporting ProRes or just doing some abstract stuff. These are actual real projects that I have personally worked on and I was able to use them again and see how the timeline scrubbing and export times are when performing edits on this machine. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of those benchmark numbers now. Okay, so what do all of these numbers and all of these stats tell us? 
Well, first of all, I think it can be said with certainty that Mac Studio is a great editing machine and I think anyone looking for an editing computer should just go out and buy one and be satisfied with it. And that's it. That's the end of the video. And thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, blah, blah, blah. I'm just kidding, y'all. This is not the end of the video. There are several other things that I think we got to discuss before I can actually give you my final verdict on it. So in all of Apple's marketing material and during the actual event, they made it clear that this machine is aimed at content creators, editors, graphic designers, and music makers. And I think that for the most part, they've actually nailed their target demographic. I think this machine performs really well in all of those tasks. However, there are several shortcomings that this machine has and some of them are actually, I don't think, are shortcomings. I think those are features reserved for the Mac Pro upgrade that they still need to update to an M into an M1 e ecosystem. And even according to Apple, that is the last machine that they're going to upgrade. Making our transition nearly complete with just one more product to go, Mac Pro. And such features might include beefier graphics, a lot more RAM, because they have in the Mac Pro, I think it can go up to like 762 gigs of RAM, which is ridiculous. Maybe some modularity, but my hopes are really not high on that one. And then there are, of course, some actual shortcomings that I think Apple really missed the mark on. And starting with no HDMI 2.1. What? What the f Come on, Apple. There's no excuse not to include that. Many editors, myself included, love using high refresh rate displays, 4K displays specifically. We want to use 120 hertz displays when we're editing. And HDMI 2.0 doesn't let us do that. And I don't think connected to this machine via Thunderbolt, it can do that either. And even the Studio Pro display cannot do high refresh rate, which is really a shame. I don't own that display, by the way. But it's a shame because MacBook Pro displays do what they call ProMotion, which gets you 120 hertz. So come on, Apple, please include HDMI 2.1 on the next iteration. Second, pretty big shortcoming. No keyboard or mouse included in the package when you buy it. I know Apple loves making people buy extra stuff and I don't, I don't blame them for that. But when you're paying $2,000 for a machine, the least I can expect is a keyboard and a mouse. Especially considering that there are some people on YouTube that have pointed out that they, they have had real difficulty uh, initializing or basically setting up the machine from the get-go with either their regular keyboards or basically if they, or whatever keyboard they were using wasn't, I don't think it was Apple. But without Apple native peripherals, they have had real difficulty setting up this machine. And for 2000 bucks, Apple should be including a keyboard and a mouse in the package. Come on now. Third, I would have actually preferred to have the same magnetic power cord that they've included with the new iMax. I'm not sure why they included the three pronged power cord. If somebody knows about that, maybe it has something to do with the power delivery. Please let me know in the comments below. I have no idea. And now let's mention some of the additional positives that I think this machine does right. Starting off with its size. This thing is tiny. And I've personally been waiting for this computer and I was really excited when it got announced because I was always a huge fan of the original trash can Mac because that thing packed a punch in a small size. And it is so cool to be able to take this thing on the road, to be able to put it, I don't know, on a DIT cart, for example, if you gotta do things like tether shooting, etc. Point is, you can literally throw this thing in your carry-on and take it on an airplane. It is awesome. And I'm not crapping all over laptops because laptops are awesome. I have several of them, but they do not come close to the power that is available in a desktop because of thermal limitations, size limitation, etc., etc. So, Last summer, because I was traveling quite a bit, I actually built a small PC to be able to take with me. That was, you know, really pow powerful. But that thing is still four times the size of the Mac Studio. So in my book, that is, that is a huge, huge plus. And speaking of thermals and fans, let's mention something about that. So this machine, I don't think fans came on a single time when I did anything on it, which is odd. When I was doing rotoscoping tests, as you've seen in the benchmarks, my PC sounded like it was about to take off into the stratosphere to join Elon Musk's satellites up there. The Mac Studio didn't make any noise at all. 
which was really, really cool. Silent but deadly, Apple. Silent but deadly. So at the end of the day, who is the Mac Studio really for? And should you be considering it as your new machine, as your main editing rig? Here's the deal. If your main job requires a lot of motion graphics, specifically 3D animation, if you're doing a lot of 6K, 8K uh, visual effects, uh, you know, anything that can really benefit from a dedicated GPU, maybe this machine is not for you. I would probably wait until Apple upgrades their Mac Pro, or maybe if you need one right now, maybe build a dedicated PC. I don't know. It's only you know what your requirements are and what your workflows are. So decide for yourself. However, I think for literally 99% of people, if you're editing 1080, 4K video on a daily basis, multicam edits, this machine will be more than enough for you. And I will go in as far as to say that base version is going to be more than enough for you. If you're doing a lot of Adobe dynamic links and things like that, maybe opt for a 64 gig version. Or maybe if you're doing rotoscoping on a regular basis, maybe opt for a 64 gig version. But for 99% of people, base version M1 Max, Mac Studio is going to be perfectly fine. Also, I want to mention that I would probably not pay for extra storage. And again, just stick with the included 512 gigabytes of SSD space because you can get external SSDs that are going to be really fast for a lot cheaper than the cost that Apple charges. I don't know, something to think about. Also, if you are a student or a teacher, I would look into Apple's educational pricings because that can save you a couple hundred bucks. Also something to think about. For the longest time, really, when people were asking me, you know, what kind of machine they should get for video editing, I intended to recommend a PC because for the most part, you got bigger bang for your buck, you got expendability, you got some additional things for your money. But now, honestly, the benefits that Mac Studio provides are really, really good. And I think for the money, it is a really good machine to get. And however, if you want to do gaming, just get yourself a PC, build yourself a rig and go game. I game too. I have a PC for that. So that would be my two cents on Macs and gaming. So these are really all of my thoughts that I have regarding Mac Studio. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Will you be upgrading your setup? Does this machine seem appealing to you? Uh, if you own one, what has your experience been like? Please leave all of those comments and questions down below. And as always, if you have any questions about Mac Studio or if you have any questions about um, media or cinematography, lighting, audio, any of that stuff, please leave all those comments down below. Please like this video, share and subscribe, tell your friends about it. It really, really helps me out. I appreciate it. And until the next time, see ya.